Dating in Germany is the worst. So I have decided to finally get off the dating apps. Oh. As we have seen how my past experiences have gone on dating apps. As I've been unsuccessful to meet my dream man on a dating app, not that I was expecting to meet my dream man, on a dating app anyways, I decided to take matters into my own hands. Just to give you a little backstory, the past two months there has been construction Listen, around- Listen, this is what I say when you're desperate. She's not flowing. She, she doesn't just put on a dress and just attract the guy. She's like, I need to, I need to control this. Now I'm gonna like, it doesn't work like that. You need to flow, you need to, you need to flirt. You need to flirt with life. You need to be happy. You can't be, I, I need a boyfriend. Be my boyfriend. Like, oh, like, like, honest. Okay, I, I, I would kind of like it if if a girl just came and just like, be my boy. Like, yeah, I'll be like, okay, may, okay, maybe it's a little weird. It's a little weird, but flow, float, float. Be like the ocean. Be like the waves the route that I take on my daily walks. On said daily walks, I have seen a guy working at this construction site and every single time we have walked by each other, we have smiled at each other. Amen. After the third time of seeing him, I decided I'm gonna write my number on a piece of paper and I'm gonna give it to him the next time I see him. Next time I went on my daily walk, I saw him, we smiled at each other, but Damn. in this moment he was with a bunch of other construction workers and they all turned around and looked at me. I chickened out, I completely got nervous and I didn't give him my number. Even though it was the perfect moment to give him my number because they were on a break, they weren't mm. working. It was literally the perfect moment and I remember thinking afterwards, why didn't I give him my number at this moment? That could have been- Because it's hard. <laughs> because, because it's hard walking up walking up to the girl and I was out in Stockholm, right? And bro, there's this girl which I'm vibing with. I'm vibing, but she's got, she is guarded like the first lady. She has bodyguards and not bodyguards like men, it's women. And they're looking at me, they're judging me and I can hear the whispers and I'm like, oh my God. So I'm like, okay, she's about to go. Cause we, you know, eye contact, we talk a little bit. Then her friend's like, oh, we gotta go. Like we're about to leave. I can't find her. So I'm like, F it. We go down to the train station and she's standing there with a bunch of her friends. I'm talking about like six girls, one overweight, which is a little bit negative, And she's like, I'm like, okay, get the courage. I go up, I ask for a number. I get it, but it's a difficult thing, man, when you're getting judged. Because you can, you, you sense the aura and you, you know like, oh my God, they're gonna be talking and whispering and oh my God, he, oh, you should have dated him all right. Like, bro, they'll be, they'll be spewing all of that. You know, they'll be whispering in her ear. So I'm like, ah. Okay, you know, I just have to do it. I just, but that's, that's the ultimate test, right? If the friends like you, then you're in. My last chance. You know what? It almost was. After the moment of me chickening out and not giving him my number, I was like, okay, the next time I see him tomorrow, I'm giving him my number. Okay. So it's the next day I go on my daily walk. You know who I don't see there? Him. He's not working. You know what? This construction has been there for months. <laughs> and at this moment, I saw they were cleaning everything up and it was basically done. And I was like, there's no way that this has been here for months and I missed my chance yesterday to ever see him again. They're done with the construction, yeah. they're cleaning up, mm. and he's never gonna come back. Kay. I thought, oh my gosh, I literally just lost my chance. I'm never gonna see him again. So I go up to one do? of the construction workers there and I start asking about him. Of course, he thought it was funny and he was like, well, why didn't you give him your number when you saw him? Yeah. And I was like, I don't know, I regret it. I should have. Are you guys gonna be here on Monday? He did not know. He did not know what the schedule was. I was literally thinking about it the whole weekend. I was like convinced I would never see him again. And I was like, I'm gonna still have some optimism that they're gonna be there on Monday. The only time I will wish for construction to stay on the streets. And I'm gonna hope that I see him on Monday and I'm gonna take my chance and do it on Monday. So Monday rolls around. I wake up extra early. Oh I my rush. God, that kind of feels like that Miley Cyrus song. The last time I freaked out, I just kept looking down. I just started when you asked me what I'm thinking about. 
interesting very very interesting what do you guys think is going to happen i think this is just my hypothesis i think she's going to chicken out i think she's going to chicken out or something's going to happen and they're not going to get the number but i could be wrong let's see get ready i go over to the construction mind you this is literally 10 minutes after i woke up okay. i was like i gotta do it now i was still like half asleep at this point but i was like i'm gonna do it anyways i walk past the construction and who do i see i see our guy I see him there and i'm like i'm doing it right now and you know what i did it i gave him my number he was very surprised and kind of confused but we had a nice conversation very short because i was like i gotta get out of here i'm embarrassed I did it i gave him my number i'm proud that i did it even if nothing comes from it, if he decides not to message me, that's fine. It's still a win in my book. Now, mind you, this construction is on my daily walk route, so I can basically see what he's doing every day. If he messages me or doesn't message me, I can anyway see that he's busy, still waiting on a message. It's only yesterday that I gave him my number. Oh. I'm excited to see if he even writes at all. I'm excited. I don't know what will come from this. I've never done anything like this before, mm. but definitely better than dry small talk <laughs> yeah. on a dating app. 100%. Get off the dating apps, do it in person. And this is great. Amazing that a beautiful girl like this went up to the guy and just said, F it, let me ask for his number. Because I think if women are complaining over the fact that we're not approaching, then they should start approaching. So this is amazing i've never this is the first time i've ever experienced something like this i've never even heard of a girl going up to a guy and asking for the number never usually they pass by and then they do this and then the guy's supposed to like he's supposed to understand like oh my god she wants my number or she kind of like looks at you then she's like oh you're supposed to come and talk to me like Usually it's things like that, but she went up and she actually did it. So kudos to you, Mrs. Pretty Lady. I hope he contacts you. And the worst part would be also if he doesn't and he's still working there and you're thinking like, okay, now it has gone like a month, one month longer and he's still like working and you're always passing him. And you're like, when are you gonna, when are you gonna contact me? So beautiful love story have you ever thought about how we as a society always focus on the older woman who has no significant other and no child and we shame her and call her a cat lady as if like she is such a harm to society when really the biggest harm to society are the older men with no children and no significant other like these are the people that are in the club looking at younger women trying to sleep with younger women they're typically very pervy they're weird they're creepy and more often than not, they have these ugly bachelor pads that feel cold, but somehow ending up as a bachelor with no children, no significant other is fine, despite the fact that those are the people that are actually harmful to our society. But being a crazy cat lady who's- at I totally disagree. You know, women, they have this fake facade about, we care about the young girls. This woman, what, she is what, in her 40s right now, and she's talking about younger women. And I've noticed a pattern when it comes to older women. They're constantly pretending to care about these girls. What? The 18-year-olds to the 25. I, yeah, I have to say 25, 26, right? They say, oh my God, she's so young. She doesn't know what's happening. But when she was in that age, right? She was going through all the boys, right? She was eating all the ice cream. Now, it's very interesting that when they're in their 40s, then they want to protect those girls. The reason why is because no one is interested in them. If men were still pursuing them as much as they pursued these younger girls, they wouldn't have a problem with it. The problem occurs when she kind of like hits that danger zone when she's 27, 28, she's, she's getting out of her prime or she is in her prime but you know, the interest from men is less and less and less and less. That is when she pretends to care about the younger women. Okay, real quick story time about the best decision I ever made. So I ended things with my ex-boyfriend and I realized I needed to move out of my hometown. Like I just had to get out. So I moved to Miami, big mistake. Hated the people, hated the lifestyles. The guys were all douchey and 
fake. So I was like, I'm just gonna work out and go to the gym. So that's literally how I spent my days. I was up at 5 a.m., asleep by 9 p.m. Didn't do anything other than work, sleep, gym, repeat. And then my best friend came down and she was like, hey, I'm going on this date tonight. And I was like, you're going on a date? Like, I wanna go on a date. And she was like, okay, so go on a date. So I text this guy who I'd been kind of like talking to here and there, but he was a real, you know, and I was just like, can you bring me ice cream? And he was like, no, I'm not bringing ice cream. And I was like, yeah, you are like, bring me ice cream. And he was like, okay, fine. So he shows up at my apartment at like nine o'clock at night and he's like, let's go get ice cream. So we go to this ice cream parlor that's downstairs from my building and we're sitting there and we talk for like three hours. And then I got this. So... <laughs> when you're pretty all the doors open <laughs> want to know if you're pretty or ugly just listen look and listen to a pretty person she got a ring directly she was just jimmying then she got the ring that's it No hate, no hate to this content creator. She's a beautiful girl. I'm just saying like we're living in two different realities. When it comes to men and women, women are already set. Everything is already set. They're the product. We are trying to buy and sell the product. Whatever these guys say to try to convince me to marry them, I'm still the price. That's how they're thinking. If I'm being honest, it's true. So as a man, go to the gym, work out. Don't waste your money at the club unless you have it. Like if you have it like that, if you have 400,000, which you can just throw away. Listen, throw, throw it my way. Throw me 400,000. Then I can do something productive with it. But it's, it's crazy. That is, that is wild.